Welcome to Subzi Life. Conscious, Conscious Living with, with a twist. twist. My name is Faison Subzali. And I'm Dr. Syra. So, Syra, you want to, well, first introduce yourself because you love doing that. <laughs> <laughs> love telling people who you are, so oh, go ahead. Man. I'm a psychotherapist and I work with people who are looking to incorporate their cultural values and their spiritual beliefs into therapy. Um, I run workshops and I have trainings and do podcasts and. I'm a mom and lots of things and something else. <laughs> yeah, and I'm a technology consultant and, uh, you know, I do this because my wife makes me. So You love it. Come on now. <laughs> you love it. You, I love sitting here talking to you. Yes, so much. Um. <laughs> so we started this podcast because we would sit on the couch and have these like really interesting conversations and then we thought... I wonder if other people have these conversations or other people would be interested in listening to these conversations. So we made this podcast. So basically, like we're sitting here in our living room on the couch and chatting. Awesome. So today, what are we talking about, Sarah? Today, we thought we'd talk a little bit about comparing. So, I mean, we just started talking about that this morning. And so I thought we'd continue the conversation here around how we have this tendency to look at the people around us and be like, oh, I can't believe they're doing that. I would never do that. Or why can't I do that? They're doing that. And it's like we're always looking outside of ourselves and either looking down on people or looking up to people. And there's got to be another way. Right. And the pressures are um, that we are always, of course, comparing, but... We're always looking for that next um, next thing to do because it's never enough. So, right. you know, so my our, our child just turned 11, but it's not enough that he's turned 11. He's healthy. He's enjoying what he enjoys. It's like, no, we want him to be like other kids. We want him to be different. We want him, right? Like we want, and we want to be different. It's like it's not good enough that I can provide for the family. It's so, like so. What I, do you mean you want to be like other kids, but you want to be different? I don't get it. No, like I was saying, like you know, when we're looking at our own children, sometimes yeah. it's like our child, uh, you know, our child does this much, but the other child does something different. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, why can't my child do that? Right. Like we're always looking for our our children to be different, but also we're looking for ourselves to be different. It's like it's not good. It's never good enough. We're never good enough. Right to provide to whatever right like just to live right and i think that's partly the culture maybe that we live in is that it's always about more and better and bigger and faster and the you know productivity and the bottom line and and how you know next year the company must be making more than they made last year it's like constant pressure to be more and and like even even ourselves right like when we bought this townhouse that we live in now Mm -hmm. it was it was bigger than anything we've lived in ever. <laughs> well, maybe not true, right? Like we, we I think uh, some. We of had us the support, big place. We had place. houses that we had lived in. We had um, owned. We had we us individually had owned them, but we we made ourselves into like oh yeah this this is big this is wow there's so much space, and a few years in we we're like, I think maybe we should look for something bigger, and for what purpose? It wasn't going to fulfill any any of but our But part dreams. of it is status, right? Like, this is the yeah. next thing. Like, first you rent, and then you buy a little townhouse, and then you upgrade to a house with a yard, and then you have your mansion or your family home or whatever. And, like, we just really challenged that whole thing. And I know even our, you know, family sometimes are like, when are you getting a bigger house? And it's like, well... I don't know if that's what we want because what's required to have that happen is that we have to put in more time away from each other and away from our kids yeah. in order to have more money to pay a higher mortgage. And for what? So that we can say to our family and friends, like, look, now we have the house with the picket fence. Yeah. And, some, you know, again, I think it goes back to this, are we ever going to be enough? And part of it is, of course, I think one thing you were mentioning offline was around self-esteem. Right. 
right? That we don't feel confident in ourselves um, to uh, to be able to do the things that we're doing. Like I know, uh, I think we've talked about it in one of the previous podcasts. Is this imposter syndrome, right? Like even the things that we're doing, it's like why are people paying me to do this? I'm not really good at this, right? Like stuff like that, that, that comes up, uh, for, for many of us, um, all of that plays a part in us trying to be different, always trying to be different. Can you speak to that? Well, I think, you know, the, the, the great spiritual traditions and wisdom traditions often talk about kind of coming to terms with what is, right? To be in this present moment and to accept things as they are and to leave it in God's hands. And these are kinds of the things that they talk about. And I think that's something that maybe could be missing when we talk about this comparison conversation is that when I'm comparing myself to other humans, there's some sort of a, I don't know, ranking system, some sort of a hierarchy. These people are successful. These people are not successful. But if I'm just comparing myself to myself, If I look back on who I was 10 years ago, um, then I can be, I, maybe not everybody, but I feel proud of where I am and I feel settled. And I I think if I frame it that way, then I don't have to really be much more in this moment to be okay. But I think part of it is it feels like almost a natural impulse, right? Like I do think we have this impulse to grow. And I think that impulse to grow is different than the pressure to be different. I think those are different things. Okay, explain the difference. Like, what does that mean? So the impulse to grow, it's like if you think about children, right? They're just, they're so curious. They want to know, they want to learn, they want to expand, they want to try things. And that, I think, is a natural, our natural state, to just be curious and be engaged in the world. But wanting to be different is now I'm comparing myself to another person that I'm looking at and saying, why can't I have that or why can't I be that? And so now I'm unnaturally forcing myself to change and it doesn't work. And that's why we get resentful because we look around, we compare ourselves, say to this other couple and say, well, they, you know, they have all this and what do we need to do to get all this? And we try, but we don't have their life stories. We don't have their particular grit and resilience. We don't have their, um, we're not, we're not them. Right? So we're trying to have something that somebody else has. Right. That is the comparing part. But when we're trying to have just what's naturally next for us, I think that's that's actually a good thing. Yeah. I think I know for me, as I've compared myself to others, there's a couple of mistakes that I've made. One, I haven't... I haven't... Um, I haven't taken into consideration the their challenges that they had to overcome. So what you spoke about the grit and um, and their just their personality, right? Like all the challenges that they had to overcome. And the other thing that I've discounted is what they're actually missing in their lives. Still, hmm. is that oh yeah they have X Y Z, but they're missing the A B C mm-hmm. possibly, right? And this is not to, again, to say that they're not happy or not, like, that's not the judgment, but it's, it's, wait, what is my value system? What is, what is the things that I value compared to somebody else? And because I actually haven't worked those out, mm-hmm. then I'm chasing after somebody else. And then when I do get it, right, I've, I've had career success. And even then you're like, oh, it's not. Like, it's not what I thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? But I wonder, Faze, whether this is partly, like, our age as well. Because I look at people who are older than us, 20, 30 years older than us, and some of them, those that I look up to and who I see as mentors, they don't have this going on. They've come to peace with who they are, um, and they're enjoying life on their terms. And they're not looking outside of themselves to see, am I better? Where do I rank in this you know, so I think, you know, I think at every age, there are people like that. I just feel yeah, like that's the energy that we're calling it. There are people that are 20, 30 years older than us that are still in that <laughs> rat race. <laughs> right. True. They're still comparing their like their kids are grown and yeah. they're still comparing their kids. Well, why can't you do that? Right. Right. Why can't why, now they're comparing their grandchildren? Now they're comparing their grandchildren. Right. Like, so. So I wouldn't say that um, that it, it stops. I think it stops based on. Uh, based on this work that you do, work that I do, is can I look at myself and say, okay, 
yes, I want to grow. So you're talking about the inner work, like inner self work. reflection. Yeah, yeah. self reflection, understanding who I am.、Mm-hmm. Like that's the big piece for me, right? Like I, I continue wanting to grow. I continue wanting to、um, uh, wanting to be somebody、hmm. that you know. I haven't really just like it wasn't decided by me. It was decided by other people. I let other people decide that for me. Who you、right. are and who you should be. Yeah. And so now I'm going back and reclaiming all of those parts to say, okay, this is who I actually want to be. So what can we do differently then, as parents? Do you think? I mean, I don't know if there's anything. Maybe this is just part of the human journey. But do you think there's anything we can do for our kids so that we don't set that same trap for them? You know, one thing that I I'm conscious about, and I I fail a lot, <laughs> even when I'm conscious about it, is that. For me, I hope my son and my daughter, they know that they're accepted as them, that I love them because they are who they are, not because you know、um, they've achieved something. They've achieved something. Like the only time I I、I'm, I hope that I'm not, and you know I don't do this. <laughs> I, like I said, I fail in this as well. Is that the only time I show them love is when they achieve something. I try to avoid that. Right, I try to just show them love when they're、uh, when they failed, when they've fallen, or when、I、they've done them, nothing, or when they've done nothing, and I give them advice. Of course, say,、like, "Hey, let's go, let's push through this." The other day, we had to have, have that、uh, a chat with our son, right? Like, yes, you'll, you know what, you need to do this. You're, you're going to get through it. Like, push them, but also love them in that moment and say, "I love you, anyways." Right. I love you when you're going to fall. I'm going to love you. Because I、no、think when、what. we're little, right, there's such a deep desire to please that we'll actually change ourselves. Yeah,、right? we'll we'll change our personalities. We'll shut down part of ourselves so that we're we can please our our family, especially our parents. And like I see it in our kids, right? Like little thing like um, you know, when I'm putting our daughter to bed, and there's a song that I sing her, and some days when I'm really tired, she'll say. It's okay. You don't need to do this, and I can tell she's putting her needs aside to look after me, and that's not her job,、yeah. right? I think it is her job to be compassionate and be、uh, mindful,、yeah. but at this age of like six, seven years old, it's not her job to look after the grown-ups in her life. Whereas I think you and I, the way that we were parented, and many people in our generation, is that those our parents didn't have the luxury or the presence to be able to actually see that. And so we ended up putting ourselves aside a lot, and nobody correcting us out of that. Yeah, I mean, I I know my my parents had to like just, and your parents had to fight to survive. Yeah. Right, like every day. Food on the table, like every every, the every day was a struggle just to, I mean, make sure that the rent got paid so we didn't get kicked out. And when or, we saw them, they were exhausted. By the time they got、oh yeah. home or whatever, right, they were yeah, just yeah. done. And I mean, you and I know what that feels like when it's been a long day and you're tired and you just want to sit. And your kids are like, la la la. And that was every day for them. Yeah, that was every day. There was a psychological warfare going on in their heads. Right. Right. Of trying to succeed, especially as immigrants in a society that they didn't fit into. Right. Yeah. It, it wasn't theirs. Yeah. Yeah. They were willing to sacrifice. So like it was. Tough on them, just to get through, right? And yeah, so we put our needs aside many a times to say, yeah, you know what? I won't ask for this or I won't ask for that、mm-hmm. because I know it's already going to be hard. It's already hard enough、right. to be them, right? And you're right. Like I, I mean, again, we. I want to be careful here, right? Because you and I also have the luxury of thinking about these things and and being able to do this. Being able to consciously parent, not maybe not the con- like we have the luxury of being conscious, but we have the luxury of not having that. Well, we're not in survival daily, mode, yeah, right? That daily survival yeah. mode. And when you're in survival mode, it affects. I mean, it actually affects the way your brain functions in the moment. So, all you're looking to do is kind of make it through the next. Challenge.、Yeah. I mean, we've been there. I've been there.、Yep. There's been times when I've been like really struggling, and I haven't been able to be there for my, for my kids in a way that's meaningful. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure they're going to be seeing a therapist in twenty years, <laughs> like, <laughs> or now, right? Like, but I guess what's the reason I bring it up is, I think that the reason that we push ourselves so hard is because we were pushed very hard. 
mm. to be honest. It now that external voice of pushing has just been in, become internalized, and I think until we look at that and we actually acknowledge and forgive that, you can't move on. And and you know it's a fine line, right? Because there is a push that's needed, right? Internal push where it has to be. Intrinsic. We have to be motivated to do. Yeah, so. it has to be intrinsic. Can't right. just be from uh, only external sources that are pushing us yeah. uh, to be better, um, because otherwise we don't grow. Right, so there is a fine line of where that push is coming from and how much we're willing to uh, put I in. I see. It, I see it as like a nudge forward, right? So when a baby elephant is born, right, its mother nudges it forward to kind of help it walk. Baby birds, the mom just drops it out of the nest. Like I don't want to be that. I don't want that. I want to be just dropped out of that. Just <laughs> nudge, a little nudge. Well, nature does its own things, I guess. Uh, <laughs> um, so what? what's the kind of, oh, I mean, if we were to end it here, which we need to, but where where do we go from here? Like, what's the next step for, for us and for our listeners? Well, I think if we go back to the original thing we were talking about, comparing ourselves to others, one of the easiest ways, I think, out of that is to, like you said, look at, acknowledge that we don't know anybody's whole story Mm. we sometimes might not even know our spouse's whole story or a child's whole story or a parent's whole story and so if we give people the benefit of the doubt and say you know what i don't really know what they've gone through so we're not really on equal footing to compare in the first place and just let people live and it's an internal thing right i need to stop feeling like i need to be as good as someone else or that i'm better than someone else so it's about I need to see other people as equal to me. And I think that's a place to start, including our kids, right? And I mean, of course, they're not intellectually, worldly, maybe equal to us. But on a spiritual level, like, sometimes I feel they're closer to God than I am, mm. right? So it's like, if we're just taking it from a material perspective of what we have in this worldly success, then yeah, comparison happens. But if we go deeper and we say, we're all here you know, created perhaps by the same creator, well, then we're all different and we are all just doing the best that we can. And so taking that comparison out and because it makes us at the end of the day feel bad. Even if we think we're better than other people, there's this like bitter, bitter taste in our mouth when you look down on someone. It just happens. Yeah. So that's what I would say is like really to try to look for equality um, and see people in there, acknowledge that you don't know people's full story. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's a great, uh, that's a great point. We do have to consider other people as well as, um, be humble and, and have some humility to understand that we don't know everything, right? We don't know the other person's story, whether, and I think it comes, goes back to that. And it could be the person thing. closest to us and we still Absolutely. don't really know their whole story. Yeah. Right? We don't know what's going on in their head though. Right. Right. So, um, so yeah, I think we'll leave it here. Um, leave us your comments uh, as you as you hear this. Uh, share your stories. Share share kind of the things that you struggle with. Share how you're getting over uh, comparing yourself to others uh, with us. Uh, visit Any tips a- and tricks that you have? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Share those uh, with uh, with us and our listeners. Um, uh, visit us on our YouTube channel. Uh, it's called Dragonfly Wellness TV. Uh, Syra and her team are putting out great content. This podcast is also hosted on that uh, on the YouTube channel as well. Uh, there's free mental health content that's being put out uh, regularly on that channel. Uh, so subscribe and uh, follow us there um, and, and contribute, contribute your thoughts uh, uh, on those videos uh, that are being shared. Uh, but until next time, Smile more and worry less.